Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, January the 4th, 2019. A couple of free sites, gamblersadvisory.com and bettingangle.us. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I was online, wasn't planning on doing a video today, <clears throat> but I was online and I spotted a couple of things that really surprised me. I see that late money is going on Jose Uzcategay, and right now you're getting Caleb Plant as high as a plus 260. Folks, I, I think Plant has a very good chance of winning the fight outright. I'm shocked that you're getting a plus 260 on Caleb Plant. As I said in an earlier video, this guy is defensively blessed. Uzkatege is a mid-range hooker who's going to be seeking him. If Uzkatege can't find him, if he can't get the KO, I think, I think Plant wins the fight. So I'm surprised. To me, those are compelling odds. So then I ventured over to the Chris Eubank, James DeGale fight. <clears throat> first time I was looking at the odds. So I thought, okay, how much is the Gale favored by? That was my question. And to my utter amazement, the Gale is the underdog in the fight. He's a mile underdog, but folks, in the comment section of this video, somebody tell me how that's possible. I think the Gale is one of the most misunderstood fighters of our generation, right? He's only 32. He's only 32 years old. I understand some contemporaries are losing fights. George Groves just lost to Callum Smith. Okay, I understand um, Andre Durrell uh, lost to Uzkatege. Okay, fair enough. Boxing's a young man's game. But why the Gale's 32, and I'm just wondering, does anyone watching this video think that Chris Eubank is better defensively than James DeGale? Let me say this too. DeGale is one of the most unique fighting styles in the game. You've seen guys who are ambidextrous. Terrence Crawford, right? Uh, Tyson Fury. Guys who can switch and fight different rounds with either a left or a right hand. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Folks, the Gale switches every five seconds at times. I mean, you look at a Gale fight, you don't know what foot is his lead foot. Right? The Gale, the Gale can switch him up with the best of them. It's a unique style that, in my opinion, can't be taught. Right? His brain is wired in such a way where he doesn't have to think, let me get in a southpaw stance. Right? It just comes naturally. Right? 75 miles an hour and James DeGale on the fly can just go right-handed. Can just go left-handed. Chris Eubank doesn't have anything remotely resembling that level of creativity or unpredictability. He just doesn't. Let me say this too. <clears throat> when James DeGale wants, he can get on his back foot. He has a full back foot game. Right? Full back foot game. He can get on his back foot and he can outbox Badu Jack. Now let's remember that Badu Jack fight, because I know people are going to say, hey, that fight was a draw. I know folks are going to say DeGale got his teeth knocked down. Now keep in mind, this is the hurt business. You see a lot of guys, they look a certain way. You don't realize that they're wearing dental bridges and stuff like that. Let's face it too, Badu Jack can pack a punch, can't he? 
The bottom line is James DeGale was winning that fight. He had that fight in the bag. Then he curiously decided to pursue the Tyson Fury way of fighting a 12th round. Right? He's hanging around Badu Jack, who doesn't have quick feet. Right? He's hanging around Badu Jack close enough where Badu Jack knocks him down. Folks, James DeGale looked better against Badu Jack, quite frankly, in my opinion, than Adana Stevenson did. Let's remember, Badu Jack beats George Groves. If, if James DeGale just decided to move a little bit more in the 12th round, and I understand this is like saying if Tyson Fury just stayed away from Deontay Wilder in the 12th round, it would be obvious that James DeGale won that fight. Let me say, too, DeGale does have a problem with very mobile, high-volume aggression. Right? Caleb Truax throws a lot of punches, a lot of punches, is on his front foot. DeGale's a guy who doesn't like to be crowded for 12 rounds, right? I'll say this. Understand, in terms of fight styles, Caleb Truax is probably the worst possible fight style for an opponent to have against James DeGale. Right? The Gale lost the first true axe fight. The second fight, he could have lost it. That fight was a coin flip. Let's face it. Now, it's because of those two fights, and Eubank doesn't have true axes high volume. Right? He just doesn't. It's because of those two fights, apparently, and it's because of a bad 12th round against Badu Jack. And it's because Rogelio Medina, also front foot heavy, did better than expected against James DeGale. That DeGale somehow is an underdog against Chris Eubank. Folks, DeGale is a master technician. Master. Right? DeGale's a guy who beat Andre Durrell in Boston. He beat Lucien Boutte in Canada. This is a guy with big wins against hometown fighters on the road. Right? To me, DeGale, almost certainly, if it goes to the scorecards and no one gets knocked down, DeGale almost certainly wins a decision. Right? To me, Eubank just doesn't have this level of boxing skill. DeGale really is, in my opinion, off the page. Right? Now, I'll agree. We saw DeGale on the canvas against Badu. Eubank hits hard, as Avni Yildurum knows. Right? Eubank certainly has the punching power to hurt a guy. There is the possibility that Eubank stops the Gale, right? I guess a skeptic could say, you know, the Gales looked uninspired, probably since 2017. He isn't a great athlete. He's been at 168 for a very long time, right? Fighters who stay at the same weight class for a bit too long, as they get older, sometimes are weight drained sometimes lack stamina. I understand the argument that the Gale might be past his prime. Right? But I still don't see a guy who couldn't beat George Groves when George Groves clearly only had one arm in that 12th round. Right? And Eubank didn't know what to do. Right? Did not know what to do. I just don't see how that guy beats a grandmaster. In other words, athletically, if they were to do a decathlon, okay, my money would probably be on Eubank. Eubank's probably a better athlete. But wow, boxing's a skills sport. Skills matter. As the Gale himself puts it, skills pay the bills. When it comes to skills, a guy who's ambidextrous, 
who also has a back foot game, right? Who, you know, knows how to maintain distance and can methodically outbox a Badu Jack over 12 rounds. Um, to me, that's the guy to pick in this fight. The bet I like, and the Gale's the underdog. And again, I'm shocked at that. I was expecting the Gale to be a minus 150. Right, odds that would give the Gale a 60% chance of winning the fight. Right, a minus 150 or a minus 200 or something like that. To find out that I could actually just take the Gale to win and get better than even money odds. And then on the other side of the play, take, you know, Eubank by KO and that the hedge is actually possible. Well, that surprises me. The bet I like is the Gale to win. Hedged with Eubank by Stoppage. But understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if the judges give the fight to Eubank, and understand, the Gale is not loved. Right? He's not loved. He isn't appreciated nearly what his skill level suggests he should be appreciated as. Just understand, if Eubank wins a decision, you lose it all. Right? What I want people to do, too, is to look at the Gale and honestly ask yourself, wow, do you think Callum Smith beats him? A guy who's a mid-range hooker who, you know, is just trying to kind of bully and throw power shots on you. Right? I'm just telling you, the Gale, and I know the Gale slaps at times, but when the Gale wants, he can live behind a jab. In other words, folks, they you know, I'll just put it this way. The Gale has certain modes, right? The same thing, by the way, with Jurgen Bramer, another guy who I think is undervalued at 168, right? These guys have certain modes. They're not the same fighter every fight. Now, some of these young guys, Eubank, and I'll give Eubank credit deep in the pocket. He throws one of boxing's best uppercuts. I'll concede that. But these young guys, Eubank, Callum Smith, um, folks, boxing's a craft. I don't think these guys have yet developed the entire level of tactical game that guys like uh, James DeGale or Jurgen Bramer have. So if the casino is going to give me better than even money odds on DeGale against a guy who recently lost a one-armed George Groves, Right? Groves is clearly hurt. His corner's not even trying to hide it. Groves is there on the ropes. He has one head dangling. And Eubank didn't have the presence of mind to pin that hand and just hit him with, with the other hand. Right? Um, you're telling me that guy is going to be the Grandmaster? Please. I like the Gale here. The underdog. Surprisingly. I like the underdog here, the 32-year-old underdog. Let's not pretend that he's 42. I like the Gale here to win the fight, hedged with Eubank by stoppage. Eubank just stopped Abney Yildurum. Eubank does have explosive punching power. He is an athlete. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Also, revisit the odds on the Caleb plant fight. That's ridiculous, folks. Right? Plant simply puts one of the better defensive fighters in the game. That's how I see it. Thanks for stopping by.